Today's look is a combination of olive green top liner with a bright purple underliner wing thing going on with, you guessed it, <laughs> glowy skin because I can't seem to ever do matte skin and a nude glossy lip. So yeah, keep on watching if you want to see how I got this look and what you can do to get this look too. Oh my god, Katie, stop talking. My name is Kate. I'm a licensed esthetician and a professional makeup artist based in the Hudson Valley. I post makeup tutorials, model applications, kit tours, skincare tips, and more. Make sure to subscribe and let's get on with the video. Okay, so we all know that I normally do the base last. However, I am doubling this base up. The video I filmed before this, the skin portion got corrupted. So I'm refilming the skin the same way I did in that video. And then I decided to do different eyes so I could do something a little bit different with it. So after saying hello to my kitty Saba, I'm going in with Sony Roselli Water Elixir followed by Water Balm on top. And I'm making a mixture of Face Atelier Foundation with Becca liquid highlighter in the color Moonstone and more water elixir to sheer it out. I personally prefer a more thin, you know, sheer coverage foundation. Just something that's going to even out my skin tone and it's going to give me a really nice glowing base. And then once I've kind of got that all over, I've got it buffed in and I'm happy with how it looks, that's when I go in and I really do all of my concealing. So I just take this foundation everywhere. I take it over the eyes, underneath the eyes. It ends up acting as a base for the concealer too. So concealer is the Denessa Myricks concealer. I don't go in, you know, a lot lighter than my skin tone. It's a little bit lighter, but not enough where it's going to be noticeable. As you can see now, I'm also using this concealer to cover my blemishes. So while it looks a little bit lighter underneath my eyes, it kind of matches in with the rest of my face pretty well. Uh, you don't want to use a lighter concealer on any blemishes because what you're going to do is you're going to draw attention to it and that's not what we want to do. So once I've got that on, I'm going to use a combination of my fingers and my brush to blend it out. And anything that is still peeking through that I'm not 100% satisfied with the coverage of it, I'll do another layer of the concealer. Now a tip for your concealer if you're finding you're not getting the level of coverage that you want, what you can do is, see this, I'm going with my second layer now, but you can apply your concealer and then don't blend it out right away. Let it sit, let it dry quite a bit, and then once you go to blend it out, just kind of tap out the edges and it keeps the concealer where you placed it. It prevents it from moving and slipping and sliding around as much. So that's what I would recommend that you do. But once I've done that and I'm blending out the concealer, I'm also going over my lips as you can see because I'm going to be going in, which is a lip gloss later, so I want to kind of blank that out. Now for blush, I'm using uh, that neutral blush that I pointed to with my little spatula. I'm mixing that with more of that Becca liquid highlighter. And I'm not going in with cream bronzer or contour. Instead, I'm going to use the blush to kind of sculpt my face just a little bit. So I'm going in with a, this kind of C shape that you can see towards the backs of my cheeks, just at the cheekbone there, and going up into the temples. Once I'm happy with how much blush I have on, Going in with, yet again, even more of that liquid um, that liquid highlight, and I'm doing another layer of that just over the high points of my face because I wanted that to be really intense there. I am a highlight whore. <laughs> I use a lot of liquid highlighter. If you want, you can mix it in with your base as I do and then not go in with the second layer that you can see, you know, just straight highlighter, or you can do just a straight highlighter without mixing it in. But, I mean, look at that glow, though. Like, it looks gorgeous. So... Once I've done that, I just tapped out underneath my eyes where the concealer is before going into set with RCMA, no color powder. It's really important that before you set, you make sure you tap out any creases or else you're going to end up setting the creases and we don't want that. So I went in for blush with that kind of darker, more neutral pink tone. It's got a bit of a shimmer to it. I went in with that just over the cream blush I applied before and I also went in with that white gold looking highlighter. That's a Savora brand highlighter that they don't make anymore. However, it is a dupe for NARS Albatross if you have that or have another dupe for it. I don't remember what those two products names were. Unfortunately, I depotted them a while ago and I didn't keep a list. However, any kind of gold toned shimmery brown bronzer will work. So I went in with a little bit of that to add a bit of warmth before going in and doing my brows. Now I normally do, if you watch my other videos, a much lighter it's still thick, but much more feathery looking brow. 
Um, however, the look I did before this, what I'm doing right now, I ended up doing a thicker brow. I wanted something a bit bolder. So because I was filming the lost footage, that's what I did. I recreated that look and I thought it actually worked pretty well with what I did. Um, I like... I kind of ended up really liking the contrast between that bold, dark brow. I still kept it fluffy with the very light makeup that I had going on the rest of my face. Um, I am taking whatever's left over of the concealer on a little flat C-shaped shader brush. I'm cleaning up just a little bit underneath the eye and just a little bit above. I'm not doing a full carve out, although you can if you'd like. And I'm taking NYX the Control Freak Brow Gel and just setting my brows into place. I, I like that uh, feathery brow, so that's the shape that I'm making. And then that's that done. Again, this is really weird and all out of order, but I was filming, you know, refilming lost footage. So for lip gloss, I ended up going in with the Ulta. This was like their Harry Potter limited collection. It's in the color Hedwig. It's just a glossy clear gloss with gold uh, specks in it. It's very pretty. And then I set my face really dramatically. I always, I always, it always ends up a hot mess, but I set that with Blue Marble Setting Spray. That was my goodbye for the next one, but here I am coming back. I think I heard a kid crying, and I think that's why I stopped to do this, but frankly, I don't actually remember anymore. But I added more of that setting powder underneath my eyes to catch any potential fallout from the shadows that I'm going to go in with now. So this is the Viseart Dark Edits palette. I did have a clip of me showing the shadow, but I must have deleted it by accident. So I'll link it in the description box down below. But I'm going in with a kind of darker, you know, medium to dark neutral brown that's in the palette. And I'm using that to start with carving out, not like a full cut crease, but just kind of carving out that crease. As you can see, I've already got makeup on my lids just from... The foundation and the highlighter that we did before so I'm not doing that much different onto the lids I do just want to go and add some depth into my crease because this is going to be a wing heavy look ah, there we go there's the clip okay so it's that brown that's right above the green I'm using that's what I used in my crease but anyway so for the wing I'm going in with that olive green shadow I'm using just a small, dense pencil brush to apply that. I'm doing it quite thickly. Um, I really wanted that band of green to show. As you can see, I do kind of feather it out at the top a bit, and I'm connecting it, extending the wing out to connect with that crease color that I did. Once I've got that on both of my eyes, you're going to see me applying it on the second eye now. I'm also going to go in. It looks like it's black in the footage, but it's not. It's a deep, deep navy blue, and that's what I'm going to use on a very thin uh, liner brush to line and hug just at my lash line and follow the bottom of that green wing going up. So putting the green on. Bah, bah, bah. You can definitely do this look without adding that darker crease color. I just, I wanted that balance though. I didn't want it to be like a wing only look. I wanted a little bit more smoke. I wanted a little bit more to it structurally than just the wing but you can skip that if you don't want it to be as dramatic but yeah if you see that color it looks black but to me it, it it's really not I wish I could remember what I was saying here <laughs> I don't remember what I was saying here but yeah so just go in line your lash line keep it close and then follow the green in the wing shape out it's also a good time. You can kind of use it to also correct if it's not perfect on the bottom too. You can kind of sharpen it up a little bit, especially because you're going in with that pointier brush. I really liked how it looked layering the one color and then going in with the darker color underneath to add structure to it. So this gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous purple shadow, this is what I'm taking underneath for my quote unquote underwing. I feel like that's got to have a different name. Reverse wing, I don't know, I can't keep up. Whatever it is, I'm using that to create like a double wing underneath the green. So I'm bringing it all the way to the inner corner and then bringing it up. So this is a really tiny, tiny pencil style brush. Um, it is rounded, it is oval, and I really liked the way it created this shape. This is a different brush set that I can link down below as well. It's a new one that I bought, a little different than the one I had, but I thought it really worked well. So once I had that on, I'm going in with just a fluffy 
medium sized brush. There's no product on it. I'm just blending out that purple. Vizier shadows blend like a dream, so they're wonderful without having to go in with another color to blend and transition. Finally, I'm going to take this um, light shimmery purple. This palette, there's a different shimmer shade that it coincides with some of the different colors in the palette. So I'm taking that and I'm first applying it with that same pencil brush that I had and kind of going up, following the curve of my orbital bone around before blending it out. Now this is another Viseur palette. I think this is the Paris Edits. You don't need to use this one though. Any uh, light colored shadow will do but this is like a light white shimmery shadow that has a bit of a gold reflect in it and I put that over top the purple on the inner just on the inner corner that tiniest part and then underneath the brow after that I swept away any of that excess powder underneath the eyes that was protecting from fallout curled my lashes and then went in with two coats of mascara on the top and some on the bottom I finished off the look with a purple melt eyeliner and then that was it and you can take your hair down, shake it out, and enjoy. I think this is a really fun look. Uh, I think it's a nice way to experiment with color without it necessarily like, being so overpowering. But yeah, if you recreate it, definitely tag me and have a good day. Bye! Make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe.